Hello everybody, today I would like to introduce you a new lens for extreme macro photography, the Laova Aragon Supermicro Apo Lens. This lens is made for 10 to 50x magnification and I would like to introduce it to my workflow and what image results you can achieve with it. Maybe some tips and tricks and how you get the sharpest macro picture you've ever taken. My name is Torben Danke, I'm a macro photographer from Germany, specialized in native insects from Central Europe and I would like to say, let's go. First of all, I would like to show you the lens and explain in detail what magnification levels you can achieve with it and how to use it. I would like to tell you something about the numerical aperture and the associated depth of field and how you can calculate it. I can give you some tips how you set the light at extreme macro photography, but I will not explain this to you in detail because how you shooting your objects with flash or LED continuous light, how you set the shadows and the highlights, it's up to you because that's the fingerprint of your photos. Uh, as I said, I can give you some tips, but I wouldn't recommend that you do it exactly like I do because the pictures are looking the same and I think that's the unique part of the photography. I will show you a very very easy light setup with which you can uh, achieve very very good results and I'm sure that everyone in the extreme macro photography scene is using this light setup and still using this light setup because yeah you can you can achieve very good results with it, but as I told you, the results of this light setup are all looking the same. So if you want to have something special in your pictures, you have to play with the light and the shadows. In this video, we deal with the important basic things. I think these basics you need to understand in order to work with this lens. So we don't want to try we want to understand and work with it. The main lens is always the same and depending on the magnification you want to achieve with it, you have to change only the tube lens. You have four different tube lenses, 10x, 20x, 35x and 50x. The main lens is an infinitely corrected lens and as I've already said, this lens remains at the forefront of the various magnification and depending on the magnification you want to shoot, you only have to replace the tube lens. Infinitely corrected means that the light rays emerge from the back of the lens in parallel and only have to be corrected onto the sensor by a tube lens. The advantage is we always have the same working distance of 20 millimeters and with this we can build light setups that can be used at all magnifications because we don't have different working distances. The main lens has a built-in aperture, but since this involves microscope technology, the aperture is not specified with an F, but with an NA, the so-called numerical aperture. I will now continue to say NA in this video for numerical aperture. The different tube lenses and magnifications have a different maximum NA you can use shooting your shots. If you go beyond this maximum aperture, the picture will get blurry and milky a bit. A low NA will increase the depth of field. This can be used uh, when filming, for example, but it does not produce the sharpest image. Now here's the first tip with the different magnifications. I wouldn't recommend that you go any further like this NAs. So now you have the maximum NA for the different tube lenses to create the sharpest single image. But uh, this also means you have the lowest depth of field. The higher the magnification, the higher the NA, the shallower the depth of field is. We cannot change this. This is physics, or to be more precise, optic. This means that at a high magnification, in our case 10x or more, in order to create a certain depth of field, we have to use the focus stacking technique. 
The cool thing is that you can calculate the depth of field by using the maximum NA of your main lens. Now this sounds a bit complicated, but I will explain it to you in detail. There is a simple formula for calculating the depth of field. You only need two variables. On the one hand, the NA of the lens and the wavelength of the light. Now, how we get the wavelength of the light we have to use in this formula? This is quickly explained. The human eye can only perceive a certain wavelengths of light. This ranges from the infrared to the beginning of the ultraviolet light. Our human eye reacts most sensitively in the middle of this visible range, which is around 550 nanometers. We use this wavelength for the formula because the lenses for visible light are calibrated with this wavelength. If we now use the previously described maximum NA of 10x magnification and the wavelengths of 550 nanometers, we can use the formula to get the depth of field of 0 0.0065 millimeters or 65 micrometers. And so with the maximum NA of the possible magnifications of the Auragon set, I have this calculated depth of fields for the different magnifications. So now it's up to you what you do with this information. Personally, I take at least two images per depth of field and often even three. This means that I have divided this calculated depth of field again by two or three so that I have a guaranteed overlap of the sharp areas when stacking. And then if a single image is a little bit blurry, it will not affect the complete stack. But too many images can also blurry the result. It depends on how you work. Just check it out. For example, if you have an automatic macro rail, you can take up to five images per depth of field and then delete as many images per depth of field as you want in order to compare the results with each other. If you have a manual macro wheel, I would recommend you have to go through it at least one time. So let's switch to the studio and here I'm going to show you how to set up the most used light setup in extreme macro photography worldwide, two IKEA lamps and a sheet of paper. That's it. You only have to light up the sheet of paper and then you have a very very smooth light tunnel. As you can see I put a little bit of aluminium foil at the end of the lens because it's better than a black ring because you can use this light also for illuminating your object. I put the fly on my needle holder and I choose the blue background to set up the scene. As you can see, that's a completely different look with a different white balance. So normally you have to use a gray card to get the right colors here. Now it's time to start the macro rail. I have the automatic macro rail from Novoflex, Castel Micro and here at this at this setup I used 0 0.005 millimeters or 5 micrometers for my step size. Now I teach in the start and the end point and with the 5 micrometer steps the macro rail calculated 301 steps to shoot the photos this results in 302 single images. Here I show you some single shots of the stacking series. As you can see the depth of field is so small that only one or two rows of the omatidia from the compound eyes are visible here. But you can also see the focused areas are razor sharp. And that's one of the great things of this lens set. You don't have to do a deep dive into microscope technology to get some high magnification experience. I've never seen a system like this before and I think the Aragon is the first lens on the market which is shipped with your camera mount and ready to start. 
Before I show you the final result of the fly portrait, it's a real coincidence that I can show you one of the most popular stacking effects. I didn't plan it, but the fly is perfect to show it to you. Because of the antennas in the front and the compound eye in the background, both areas are sharp when stacked. The stacking software, in my case it's Serene Stacker, don't know what's in the front and what's in the background. This is why you have the so-called ghosting effect, when it seems that uh, some things in the foreground are transparent. Therefore, I had to stack a separate image containing only the antennas and I mask it manually with Photoshop to get the final result. And here is the edited final result of a 302 image stack with the Aragon at 10x magnification. Maybe now you know the reason why I'm shooting insects. Aren't they beautiful? Look at these colors and the perfect pattern of the eyes. I could watch this for hours. Here you can see an oil beetle. I have done a stack of the antenna from 337 single images with the Aragon 20x tube. And here is the result. And because of the beautiful eyes of the fly I showed you at 10x, I had to shoot these eyes at the 35x. And this tiger beetle is one of my favorite insects. As you can see it looks like a brown beetle with naked eyes, but when you zoom in with the 50x tube, the Aragon lens shows you the real colors of this beetle. Here you can see the edge of the eye and some fine hairs on this beautiful colored beetle. So that's it for now. I hope you enjoyed the video and you can get some data and behind the scenes of my workflow. And don't forget to visit me on my Instagram page. I keep this Instagram account updated with several macro shots a week. And a lot of these macro shots uh, will be made with the Aragon lens in the future. So bye bye.